In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We finished last time, last Sunday, um, chapter 10 from the book of Acts. And today we'll go, we'll go over chapter 11. We'll read uh, some parts of chapter 11. Hopefully, if we can finish it today, we would. But if not, maybe we'll finish at least half of it and we'll continue next Sunday. Now the apostles and brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the uh, circumcision contended with him, saying, you went in to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter explained it to them in order for, uh, from the beginning, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, an object descending like a great sheet, let down from heaven by four corners, and it came to me. When I observed it intently and considered, I saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, No so, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has, has at any time entered my mouth. But the voice answered me again from heaven, What God has cleansed, you must not call common. Now this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. At that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was, having been sent to me from Caesarea. Then the Spirit told me to go with them, doubting nothing. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. And he told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house, who said to him, send men to Joppa and called for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. And then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized you with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Who was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they became silent and they glorified God, say, God saying, then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Now those who were scattered will continue that part after. So, just quickly, what happened in chapter 10 was the acceptance of the Gentiles through the house of Cornelius, who saw a vision, or saw an angel, basically, um, telling him to go and send for Peter, uh, who lives at the house of uh, Simon the Tanner. Go call him. And he came, as we, we read last time, now, look at the issue now. The church in Jerusalem, basically the church of, uh, in Jerusalem, this is the first church. These were uh, from the Jews, believed in Christ. They kept the laws of Moses from cleansing, from washing, from uh, the days of uh, the purification, yes, or the days of uh, feasts and fasts and prayer time. Uh, they kept all these things. And they accepted, accepted and believed in the Lord uh, Jesus Christ as a Savior and as God, as a Messiah. But they're still keeping all the laws of Moses. And now the news went to them that Peter not accepting the, the, not the issue wasn't the acceptance of the Gentiles or the house of Cornelius. The issue was, how dare you eat with them? You see? So, so it wasn't, who told you to let them in with us? We are number one people believed in, in, in Christ. Who are they? No, that wasn't the issue. The issue was, you are starting to break the laws or you give 
no consider consideration to the laws of Moses. How come, how can you go inside to these homes of the Gentiles and eat with them? And St. Peter started stating what happened with him, and this is for the third time. And the writer of the book of Acts, which was sent uh, by Luke, it, it, it's like, it's okay to, you know, when Peter saw the, 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 the angel, or the vision, basically, and the sheet, he said it. And then meeting with Cornelius and his house, he said it again. And now going back to Jerusalem with the, this contentment or the uh, uh, contention from the uh, uh, from these uh, believers in Jerusalem, he didn't mind saying it again for the third time. And repeating even the same vision, I saw this vision for three three times because it's so important. Accepting the the the, uh, the Gentiles wasn't something. Uh, easy uh, for for even the disciples to accept them so it came through heaven through a vision and also through the Holy Spirit who told him not to fear anything not doubting in anything go go with them fearing nothing and he went with the people who asked for him and he went to Cornelius and they um, but the issue right now when he went to Jerusalem was how how can you eat with them? And that's number one uh, problem uh, uh, from accepting uh, people from different backgrounds, that they were not Jews, not practicing, not, and, 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 and you're gonna see later on um, that they, you're gonna see that later, that they, they decided to keep just anybody coming from outside Jewish, uh, Jewish uh, background, not to make them become Jews before they become Christians. So it's not mandatory. So from an unbeliever who, uh, just a Gentile, to become Christian. You don't have to become uh, a Jew before or practice anything like that. No. Um, so, it's, and it, it seems like uh, Peter, when he stayed with them, uh, uh, I don't know how, how many days, he stayed uh, with Cornel in Cornelius' house. Basically, he, he ate with them. And every day they offer him something he eats. And that's what caused all the contention uh, between the church in Jerusalem, or the believers in Jerusalem, and with St. Peter. We notice that, you know, there's something in, in, in the Catholic Church that they give the uh, superiority or the supremacy of Peter over the rest of the disciples. Like, whatever he says goes. Nobody can object, nobody can contradict, nobody can tell him, what are you doing? But what we see here today, even uh, the, 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 how they question him, so he's like anybody else. He didn't use his authority, like, uh, how dare you talk to me like that, or, I'm a, you know, that, who am I? I'm, 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 I'm uh, the first disciple, or I'm the oldest. I'm the he didn't use that. He had to, with love, I don't say defend himself, but say the, 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 the same thing, whatever happened with him, he had to reason with them. He has to reason with, with, with them. <coughs> it says here, now the apostles and brethren who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him, saying, you went in to un uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter explained it to them in order for the, from, the, in order from the beginning, saying, exact story what happened with him. So, as I said, he was explaining to them 
his position uh, not as as a leader, not as a, a the head of the uh, disciples, uh, an apostle, uh, but rather just he was treated like one of them. Uh, you know, mentioning this for the third time, as I said, the vision, for th this is the third time. So the first time when it happened, second time in the house of Cornelius, the third time, the same vision that Peter saw is in front of the brethren and the apostles in Jerusalem. This will, will, will tell you how important this uh, event, accepting the, uh, uh, the Gentiles into uh, church, was something a God's will, through God's will. It's not from anybody because they, they couldn't do that on their own. And he started saying what happened with him, as I, as I told you. Uh, but notice one thing, that he didn't say anything about Cornelius. You know, he didn't say anything about Cornelius, meaning he didn't say he's a centurion, a high rank in, uh, uh, in a govern, uh, in, uh, as a governor or as a soldier or a leader. He didn't care about that because the acceptance was through the Holy Spirit, not because the prestigious Cornelius. Because if he started saying, well, Cornelius saw uh, 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 an angel telling him so and so. They, they would say, who told you that he's saying the truth? You know, why are you taking his side? Are you telling us anybody comes to you and say, an angel appeared to me and told me? What, what? He didn't even mention that part in the beginning. He mentioned everything that happened with him. That I was in, 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 in Joppa and I was praying and I saw this vision. Uh, the, the sheet was coming from heaven uh, uh, and telling me, Peter, rise and kill and eat. And, and I, I responded back saying so and so. So all these things, he's saying that this is not me. This is through God and the Holy Spirit. That's what they... God wants to accept them. Who am I to, to reject or, or say no? Who am I? So that's, that's why he, he, he explained it to them. When I observed it intently, and I, I consider I saw, uh, he, he, this is the vision. Um, and, and never, uh, you see, he told them the vision of himself, not the vision of Cornelius. Do you notice the third time? He doesn't have the vision of Cornelius. He didn't say what Cornelius saw, and, but yes, he said he saw uh, and, and he sent for me, but, that was, but he didn't say who, who Cornelius was. So it's not based on uh, your rank and your prestige and uh, uh, whether you're rich or poor, nothing. The Holy Spirit worked with someone outside the church, period. He didn't say anything much about Cornelius. Now, this was done three times, and all were drawn up again into heaven. You see this verse, verse 10, that he's saying that this happened to me three times, this vision. He's saying, basically, what I heard was not a fantasy or illusion. I'm not seeing things. If it was something, maybe, if it happened one time, maybe, okay, we'll say, I saw this vision one time. But it happened three times to confirm that this was a real vision. It's not a fantasy, it's not an illusion. But was ra uh, uh, rather it was divine command through a divine command. And um, so, and it says it was taken into heaven, that this vision at the end was taken up to heaven. So it's a heavenly message, heavenly uh, command. Then he continues saying, then the spirit told me to go with them doubting nothing. Doubting nothing. And this is a very good verse. It tells us that even Peter himself, when he saw this vision, he had some, some doubts. So he's telling them, if you're doubting, 
what I did with them, not only you, my, I myself was doubting. I was doubting. But the Holy Spirit told me, then the Spirit told me to go with them, doubting nothing. So I said, it's not only you, it's even myself. And that's how I responded to the, to the voice that I heard. I say, I never ate anything common, Lord. I said, what God has cleansed, you don't call common. So it's not only I responded the same way if you would have responded to the same vision. So it's not only you in this position. It's I, I had some doubts myself, he's saying. But he said something beautiful that he said, um, and he, uh, before I get to uh, who am I to, to, to reject or, or, or to prevent gods from uh, working, he said, moreover, these six brethren accompanied me and we entered the man's house. So it wasn't one man show. It wasn't Peter by himself. He had six people with him. Eyewitnesses is the greatest ministry is based on eyewitnesses. People who saw the resurrection of Christ, they all became witnesses to witness his resurrection. And these people saw what happened in the house of Cornelius. How they, right after accepting, uh, uh, listening to Peter, right away the Holy Spirit came upon them. Came upon them. And when he came upon them, there's a sign. There's something different happening. They start speaking, talk, speaking in tongues. Starting, the, 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 the place will be shaken. Same way it happened in Pentecost when the disciples themselves received the Holy Spirit. So those six, those six people, they, they, they witnessed what happened in the house of Cornelius. So yes, I'm telling you, it's not us. It's God's working. The Holy Spirit came upon them. And he told us how he had seen an angel. But that's secondary, you see? That's secondary. After he recited, after he stated exact what happened with him, then, okay, Cornelius also saw a vision or saw an angel. And the angel told him to go get me from a place that's concealed to him. How, how would uh, he know uh, that I was in uh, Simon's the Tanner's house? How? I listen, and it's, it's, it's God's message, direct uh, command. Go send for Peter, who's at this place. So the, both visions, whether it's from Peter's side or Cornelius' side, it's the same one between two people. Same, they're completing each other. It says here, what God had concealed from him, he revealed to the Gentiles. And what he concealed from the Gentile, he revealed to him. Because you see what happened with, uh, when, when Peter saw the vision, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, didn't tell him, go to a house of Cornelius or anything. He said, there are people waiting for you at the door? Go with them, doubting nothing. He didn't tell him any more details, nothing. Just go with them. Don't fear. But while what happened with the Gentile, Cornelius, he told him exact thing. Exactly, he gave him more details with names. Go to that place, go get Peter, and he will tell you what to do. But Peter didn't get all this information from, the, from the, uh, his vision. God told him, just don't worry, just go. The Spirit of God told him not to fear, go. And now, there we see the, the, the love of God that reaches out to every man, every woman, in any place. He makes things work just to bring people. Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter, who will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved.
Here, uh, he will tell you even words. You see, even the words. He said, he, uh, uh, he uh, will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved. Can you imagine the magnificence or the, 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 power f the power of the words that we speak? Nowadays, we, we speak uh, things in vain, ungodly words, um, uh, stumbling wor words. But can you believe that some words can bring salvation to people? The only word of God. So let's not uh, take the message of God lightly or the word of God. When you bring people to God, it has power when you speak the word of God. If the angel told him, who will t t t uh, told Cornelius that go send for Peter, who will tell you words, not to do something, not a miracle, not a healing, not to show you a, a, a magnificent uh, 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 performance, nothing. He will tell you words by which you and all your household will be saved. Only words. So do not underestimate the power of the word of God when you try to preach or minister to anyone outside the church. The word of God is powerful. It's powerful. <clears throat> the um, there are few ways for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, how can we be filled or, or, or have the Holy Spirit in our lives? One way of receiving, not receiving, we all receive the Holy Spirit. We all receive the Holy Spirit. But to feel His presence or to feel that you have the Holy Spirit, it's through prayer. When you pray, you feel the Holy Spirit uh, with you. And he, he prays with you in a language that we cannot even express. In a way that groans within us. So prayers uh, that made the, the, the whole place shaken to indicate the, the presence of the Holy Spirit. So through prayer, through prayer, we can uh, receive and have not re we all received it yet in baptism but to to revive or to uh, see the presence of his uh, uh, existence within our lives so through prayers also the Holy Spirit works in the sacraments of the church the Holy Spirit works in baptism and the Mayroon is the invocation of the Holy Spirit when Abuna anoints the child or the person who's been baptized and, 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 and blows in his face and he says, accept the Holy Spirit. That's another way, it's through the sacraments of, of the church. Uh, communion, when Abuna prays and, 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 and asks for the Holy Spirit to, to make this bread body for your only son, Jesus Christ, and, and the blood and, and, the, and the wine and the, and the chalice to become the blood of your only begotten son to, to, to bless us or to sanctify us and the, 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 the gift that we put on the altar, the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we have no business. So through prayer and through the sacraments, even, even when you come and confess your sins before Abuna, there is no forgiveness uh, unless it's uh, through the Holy Spirit. And Abuna prays and, 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 and he blows. So sometimes we blow in the face. May God uh, uh, absolve your sins, absolve you, and, 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 and read the absolution that this is the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, another way of, of, of keeping the, the Holy Spirit within our lives and, and see his work 
inside us through the word of God. Through the word of God. Whether it's, it's uh, uh, you, you, you listen to it or read it, it's, it has power, the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, and that's what you notice every time we have a liturgical service in the church, whether it is a uh, raising of incense, a liturgy, uh, a wedding, a funeral, um, um, uh, any, any sacraments, any, anything we do in church, is, uh, we have the Holy Spirit work in it through what? Through prayer, as we said, when you pray, the, the place can be shaken in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Number two, we read the Word of God. Without reading the Word of God, hmm, the Word of God is powerful. So these are the, uh, and, and that's the Word of God through the Holy Spirit. It gives uh, uh, understanding, gives you uh, comfort. You know, when, when you read the Word of God, you're comforted. But who is taken uh, out of the th uh, triune God? Is it God the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit that comforts? We say, the comforter, hmm? the Holy Spirit. So why when we read the Bible, we, we are comfortable and comforted? It's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. So if you want to know, or you want to be filled and have a, a, a relationship with the Holy Spirit, through three things prayer uh, sacraments taking parts in the sacraments and number three through reading and listening to the word of God and that's the church as a mother to us every time time you come to church there's a prayer and there's a word of God read right look at any sacrament and tell me if there's no word of God there's no gospel. Sometimes we have a, a Pauline epistle, Acts, or the, the Pauline and Catholic epistle and Acts, and the Psalm and a gospel. Weddings, what do we have? A Pauline epistle and a gospel and a Psalm. Funeral, Psalm, uh, we have a Pauline epistle, read, and a Psalm and a gospel. Baptism, Whoa, we have tons of readings. We have a lot of readings for baptism. What else? Funeral? It's not a sacrament, yes, but it's a prayer to comfort you and comfort the people. We have Pauline, as I said, and, and our gospel. What else? Al Andil, unction of the sick. Well, seven prayers, and all of them include to uh, a gospel reading. Right? So this is, this is the, everything we do in church. N we can't separate the work of the Holy Spirit away from the reading the Bible and living the, the Word of God. Because there's no Holy Spirit without this, uh, the Word of God. They're both interconnected. And that's what we emphasize in, in every service in our church. And that's as a church, not we, the church. Make sure that we read the Bible every time you come to church. And we pray so through prayer and reading the Bible. And then communion, basically, and confession and everything. There's a Holy Spirit working through these sacraments. Um, maybe we'll go five more minutes or so. We'll finish this uh, if therefore God, St. Peter continues, if therefore God gave them the same gift as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand God? He basically, he, after, after he just responded to all this accusation or contention from, uh, from them, he said, so do you think it was me? I myself had some doubts. And the Holy Spirit told him, not to doubt anything. And then he put them face to face with who? With God. He put them face to face with God. What I did, let's suppose it was wrong. But I told you my vision. I told you Cornelius' vision. I told you what the Holy Spirit told me. Huh? And I saw, and these six people that came with me, saw the same, the work of the Holy Spirit coming upon them. Who am I? 
So he put them face to face with God. Can we come against God? Can we tell God what to do? He sent his Holy Spirit upon them. Who am I? Right away, they accepted his uh, way of, 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 of uh, uh, defending himself or defending the situation, defending the, the Gentiles or the acceptance of the Gentiles into uh, faith. And right away, the verse 18, verse 18 says, when they heard these things, they became silent. They became silent and they glorified God saying, then God has also granted to the Gentiles repentance to life. Yeah, that's a proof. That's, I guess, okay, I guess God wants everybody. I guess God is a God of the whole world, not us only. So now, that's, that's what God wants. We're just instruments in his hands, just tools. We can't say, what, why are you doing, God? It's his. He can send the Holy Spirit, whatever he wants, upon any people he wants. Who, who are we? Who are we? So St. Peter's speech confirmed the complete membership of the Gentiles in the Church of Christ, that neither the circumcision nor the literal keeping the law of Moses were prior conditions for salvation. Basically, yeah. he sent believe he's, he's telling he sent the Holy Spirit right away. I didn't even baptize them first. The Holy Spirit came upon them. So I guess why you want to burden them later on? We're going to see the issue of whether. Uh, they have to be Jews first, uh, believing and accepting and keeping the, 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 the law of Moses or just skip that part. Yeah, they're going to come to this point and then they're going to resolve this. No, just if they accept Christ and baptized and not to eat anything that's uh, 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 given to idols. That's enough. That's enough. And that's why the Church of Egypt, for example, and, and, and when we continue next week, <coughs> and you, the Church of Antioch in Syria, um, we don't have to become uh, Jews before we become Christian. We don't keep every uh, letter of the law of Moses, but we accepted the faith, we were baptized, done. That's it, right? That's the Church of Egypt, for example, Alexandria, until today. But we, we don't go following check, uh, the checklist of, uh, of Moses, wh what he need to do and uh, uh, nothing. Maybe we keep small things, but not everything. Our feasts are different. So we're not following everything, so, but we kept what the, the, the apostle told us what to what to do we'll we'll stop here and we'll continue the rest of the chapter next week god willing and we'll see the the work of the holy spirit through uh the church um of the gentiles in antioch now we have a church where in jerusalem there's a church in jerusalem and when we say jerusalem these are the the believers in christ from um, the the jewish background Okay, now, no more. God is inviting people from outside, Gentiles. And now there's a church in Antioch that was for the uh, Greek. Some of them, they would say, okay, they have also some Jewish background, but the majority was just Gentiles. No Judaism whatsoever from their background. We'll continue that next week, and glory be to God forever and ever.